I recently read the book How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Did you know that having fewer friends as you get older is more dangerous than being obese or smoking 15 cigarettes a day? Did you know that having a best friend at work can make you seven times more engaged and productive? But regardless of the latest science on friendship, wouldn't it just be nice to be surrounded by colleagues and customers that you can call your friends? Rather than being surrounded by a group of people you suspect are talking behind your back and finding ways to sabotage your success? Wouldn't it be nice to have a network of professional friends you could rely on when your career doesn't go according to plan and you're looking for a new opportunity? Well, luckily, all the tools you need to build solid friendships, strengthen your network, and make people eager to help you throughout your career can be found in an 80-year-old book called How to Win Friends and Influence People. The principles in this book are as applicable today as they were when the book was published in 1936. And you can be sure that the principles in this book will be used by your kids and your grandkids when they try to win friends and influence people. Now, there are a lot of different principles in this book for winning friends and influencing people, but they all center around two fundamental behaviors. Let me tell you what these two fundamental behaviors are, with a few stories. In the 1800s, there was a poor Dutch immigrant boy named Edward Bach. Bach didn't have more than six years of schooling in his life, yet he made himself into one of the most successful magazine editors of all time. How did he do it? Well, at the age of 13, he saved up his money to buy an encyclopedia of American biographies. Then he did something that most of us wouldn't ever think to do. He read the lives of these famous people, and then he wrote them letters to ask them more about their lives. He wrote General Grant, asking about a certain battle, and Grant drew a map for him and invited this then 14-year-old boy to dinner. Soon the boy was corresponding with many of the most famous people in the nation, like Ralph Waldo Emerson, Miss Abraham Lincoln, and Jefferson Davis. Each influential person he met introduced him to the next influential person, and soon he had all the access he would need to run a successful magazine. His mere interest in others won the friendship of some of the most important people in the nation. The first fundamental behavior to win more friends and influence people is to be genuinely interested in other people. Author Dale Carnegie says, you can make more friends in two months by becoming interested in other people than you can in two years by trying to get other people interested in you. To spark a genuine interest in others, make it your mission to find out how someone spends their time, and what subjects excite them. Then make their subjects of interest your temporary passion. Be fascinated about what fascinates them. Say someone's into collecting stamps. Stamps might become interesting after you do a little bit of research and find out that the most expensive stamp in the world is worth $9.5 million. If I met someone with a stamp collection, I'd be eager to ask what stamps were popular during World War II. Another way to show your interest in others is to ask them for advice. Back to the stamp example, you would be asking, if I were to start a stamp collection, where should I go to buy old stamps? If you give them an opportunity to share their interest and show their expertise, they will associate their excitement and their passion with your presence. Being genuinely interested in others can also influence people to act in your favor. In the early 1900s, a man named Edward Chaliff was looking for a favor from a president of a big corporation. Chaliff was doing fundraising for his local Boy Scout group, and he wanted to send at least one of his Boy Scouts to attend a jamboree in Europe before he met with this corporate president to see if he would be willing to fund one Boy Scout's trip to Europe. He found out that the president was proud of this $1 million check that he had framed on his wall. So the first thing that Edward Chaliff did when he met the man was ask to see his check. He told the man that he never knew anybody that had written a check for a million dollars, and he wanted to tell all his boys that he had seen a check for a million dollars. The president gladly showed him and talked glowingly about this check. After a few minutes of talking about the check, the president turned to him and said, by the way, what was it you wanted to talk to me about? Edward told him, and to his surprise, he not only gave him the money for one boy to attend the Jamboree in Europe, he gave him enough money to send five boys, plus himself, to Europe for seven weeks. In the book, Edward says, I know if I hadn't found out what he was interested in and got him warmed up first, I wouldn't have found him one-tenth as easy to approach. If you want to win friends and influence people, start by taking a genuine interest in others. 
Now let's talk about the second fundamental behavior to winning friends and influencing people. Think of a person that you've recently received praise from. Praise for your work, or chore around the house, or a good deed that you did. What was your opinion of that person after you received their praise? Think of a teacher or a boss who regularly praised your work. How does that teacher or that boss compare to other teachers or bosses? While you ponder on those questions, let me share a personal story with you. Several years ago, while I was working as an electrical engineer at a pulp mill, I was leading the electrical portion of a project. One morning, I instructed a welder to install a group of very expensive temperature sensors on a series of steel pipes. I returned to check on the welder later that afternoon and noticed that the sensors had been installed on the wrong pipes. I was horrified. Correcting the mistake would set back the project at least a day and cost the project thousands of dollars. Later that day, in a daily meeting I had with the manager of the pulp mill and dozens of other important people on the project, I said the mistake was entirely my fault and vowed to correct the screw up. I felt incompetent afterwards. But before I left the office, a senior engineer pulled me aside and praised my courage to admit fault in front of management. He said he wished he had that courage at my age. When he said that, my mood dramatically improved. And that senior engineer who praised me was someone I previously didn't like and actually tried to avoid. But now I held them in high regard. I still think highly of him to this day. And the reason is simple. He acknowledged me for something difficult that I did. The second fundamental behavior to winning friends and influencing people is to give frequent praise. Author Dale Carnegie says, People think they've committed a crime if they let their families or employees go six days without food. But they will let them go six days and six weeks and sometimes 60 years without giving them the hearty appreciation that they crave almost as much as they crave food. We are all starving for appreciation. That's why the great Charles Schwab once said, If I like anything, I am hearty in my appreciation and lavish in my praise. Like Schwab, be eager to praise others for their effort. When you notice a coworker putting in extra effort, walk over to them and praise their commitment to the team. If your child or partner helps out around the house in any way, praise them for their effort. A great way to build your praise and appreciation muscle is to make it a daily habit. Take two minutes every day to write out an email to a friend or coworker, praising them for any progress they recently made on one of their goals or projects. Make it as personal as possible. If you choose to do this on Facebook, don't just like someone's comment. Write them a direct message saying exactly why you like it. Praise is also a great tool for influencing people to act in your favor. Dale Carnegie tells the story of Pamela Dunham, a supervisor from Connecticut who had the responsibility of supervising a janitor who was doing a very poor job. In the book, he says, the other employees would jeer at him and litter the hallways to show him what a bad job he was doing. It was so bad, productive time was being lost in the shop. Without success, Pam tried various ways to motivate this person. She noticed that occasionally he did a particularly good piece of work. She made a point to praise him for it in front of the other people. And pretty soon, he started doing all his work efficiently. Now he does an excellent job, and other people give him appreciation and recognition. Honest appreciation got results, where criticism and ridicule failed. So, if you want to win friends and influence people, be genuinely interested in others and give others frequent praise. Give people the joy of talking about their interests and satisfy their craving for praise and appreciation. And soon, you will find yourself surrounded by friends who are eager to help you succeed. That was a core message that I gathered from How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. It's obvious why this book is still in print 80 years later. I highly recommend it for anyone who wants to refine their social skills. If you would like a one-page PDF summary of insights that I gathered from this book, just click the link below and I'll be happy to email it to you. If you already subscribed to the free Productivity Game email newsletter, this PDF is sitting in your inbox. If you like this video, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching and have yourself a productive week.